Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic October. Today, I wanted to count down the top 10 Halloween themed stages or levels in video games. We're taking a look at games that aren't horror games, games that are otherwise normal games that have Halloween levels or areas in them. If you enjoy it, top 10 videos, reviews, podcasts, JRPG videos, all that good stuff, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I think we can do it with your help. Let's count down my top 10 favorite Halloween themed levels and areas. Number 10. All right, at number 10, we've got Mel Sandy Village from Dragon Quest X. Dragon Quest X is an online MMORPG. It plays similar to kind of like Dragon Quest IX. And because it was an MMO, once you finish the original game as it was at release, which we all call version one, you get access to what is called version two. Version 2 starts off with a whole new adventure, you board a ship, and everyone leaves the port to go and explore an exciting new world that has been cut off from the continents that you've been exploring in version 1. Once you get there, things aren't exactly the way they should be, and you end up kind of solving the mystery as to why, and saving this new land of Landurgia from the kind of evils that are plaguing it. One of my favorite places here is the village of Mel Sandy. Mel Sandy kind of reminds me of the area I grew up in and currently kind of live in today. It's kind of like an agriculture farming community. You've got fields as far as the eye can see, and there's granaries and stuff like that. But it's the town of Mel Sandy itself. When you go inside, it's not super Halloween-y, which is why it's down here at number 10 on the list. But it's definitely got that, like, fall, autumn, kind of october -y vibe to it. The church itself is located in a hollowed-out tree. There's just, like, kind of, like, autumn leaves all around town. It's just, I love the look of this town. From having a spooky yet sexy witch in the nearby mansion, as well as the grain fields that surround it, Mel Sandy landed here at the number 10 spot on the list. Number nine. Coming up at number nine is another JRPG town, and that is, of course, Lavender Town from Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Lavender Town is kind of like where all the ghosts and stuff of Pokemon end up. They all end up in what's called the Pokemon Tower, I believe. When you first get there, it's jam-packed with ghosts. You can't do anything to like fight them or identify them. But once you get the Sylph Scope from the Sylph Company, you can come back to the Pokemon Tower and actually identify all the ghosts as ghost-type Pokemon, like Ghastly and Haunter. Haunter is one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon of all time. I love Lavender Town because of the spooky aura it has. Keep in mind, we played this on the original Game Boy. Everything was kind of like black and white or black and green if you had the oldest model of the Game Boy. And it just, the music was creepy, the buildings were creepy, the atmosphere was creepy, and of course all the Pokemon and the people inside were creepy. Another thing is that as you're walking through the tower, there's a ton of people mourning their lost Pokemon. It's very somber, kind of sad atmosphere, as well as being spooky. And then you kind of cap the experience off by rescuing an old man from Team Rocket who kind of kidnapped him and is holding him hostage at the top of Pokemon Tower. The whole experience of this place is just kind of spooky and eerie right down from a senior citizen getting kidnapped all the way to the ghosts and spirits of Pokemon and the trainers who lost them being in mourning. For all these reasons, Lavender Town strongly stands at the number nine spot on the list. Number eight. Number eight comes from a game that is really known for the opposite of horror, and that is, of course, Mario Party 2. The Mario Party series is all about multiplayer fun and shenanigans, but it's got a place called Horrorland that suits the Halloween theme just perfectly. You've got everything from Indiana Jones boulders that look like eyeballs chasing you, You've got gravestones and haunted mansions all over the place. You got crypts and stuff like that. This place is just a great design and it's honestly one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Mario Party map of all time. I'm not like the biggest Mario Party guy, but when I do play it, I like to play the maps I love and Horrorland is right up there with the best. The mini games have great horror themes to them. The board itself is incredibly designed. All the boards have their own themes, but this one I feel just goes above and beyond with its theme and how it interacts with the players. So for all these reasons and more, Horrorland from Mario Party 2 makes it to number 8 on the list. Number 7. 
At number seven, of course, is Pumpkin Hill from Sonic Adventure 2. Pumpkin Hill is just a giant group of like hills and towers jutting out of the ground with pumpkins all over the place. This is just the ultimate October fiesta. You play through it mostly as Knuckles, looking for the pieces of the Master Emerald. So you're searching every little nook and cranny for these things, which gives you all the incentive you need to explore this incredible Halloween themed stage. There's just pumpkins everywhere. I love this place. This is probably my favorite of all the Knuckles stages. So yeah, Pumpkin Hill from Sonic Adventure 2 stands strong at number seven. Number six. At number six, it had to be here is Halloween Town from Kingdom Hearts. So in Kingdom Hearts, you go to a bunch of different Disney themed areas and locations from Pride Rock in The Lion King to Agrabah from Aladdin. But the place we're talking about today is of course Halloween Town from The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's just, dude, a fully fleshed out environment of Halloween Town. I always love, and we'll get to this later on in the video with at least one of the other entrants, when you can like see a movie or a show or a series or something like that, that you always kind of see the town, but you never really get to fully interact with it until you experience it in video game form. And I feel like they did a perfect job here with Halloween Town. You get to hang out with Jack Skellington and there's an encounter with Oogie Boogie. And honestly, they just did such a great job of this place. I'm not even like the biggest Nightmare Before Christmas fan. I loved it as a kid. Not really the biggest fan as an adult, but they did such a good job of it here in Kingdom Hearts that I had to put it on the list. Number five. And number five is the Haunted Mansion from Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. This is another Disney themed game. You are basically in the Magic Kingdom of like Disneyland and there's a ton of different mini games. The premise for the game is you have to get, I think all the keys or something to unlock the uh, the main castle or something like that. You go from mini game to mini game and some of these games are really well done. Like the racing game is pretty sweet. There's like this space simulator at Space Mountain, but then you've got like this dog crap trial and error railway game where you have to just guess which route to take with your train and you only have a set number of lives in the entire experience or you have to start the whole game over it's awful but anyways my favorite stages in the game there's like this pirate theme level where you have to like rescue all these maidens from the pirate base which is like an action platformer and then of course the haunted mansion the haunted mansion is the best of the bunch in my opinion. So you get these candles that you can kind of throw at ghosts and ghouls while you work your way to the mansion and then once inside is the when the real game begins. There's a ton of like haunted furniture, there's ghosts coming out of everywhere. It is quite difficult, you get like a couple hits and you're dead. You only have a limited number of candles to throw at these guys but you can collect candles on the way. Some of the candles are pretty risky to collect but overall this is a great action platformer stage. It's quite short but on the areas where you're riding on the float chairs and stuff if you get hit once you're essentially getting knocked off the chair and dying and have to start the entire level over again it's one of those nes kind of things where the game itself isn't long but because you're dying a ton it takes you a while to get through it i love the ballroom dancing ghosts everything about this mini game is so well done and i just love it and it was the height of this game for me so haunted mansion stands strong at number five number four At number four is Transylvania from DuckTales. DuckTales is another classic NES game. Another classic Disney themed NES game. You play a Scrooge McDuck and you go to all these different locations from the Amazon to the moon and you have to collect all these jewels and stuff which give him money and make him more rich. And one of the stages is of course Transylvania. So in here you're fending off mummies, there's ghosts, there's secrets in the walls. You end up encountering one of Scrooge's nephews who tells you about the secrets in the walls. There's a little minecart area. And of course the final boss, I don't remember her name, but she's that little vampire duck. And she's probably my favorite boss fight in the entire game. I love just pogo sticking all over the room and jumping off her head. You gotta dodge her little attacks and then quickly jump over them to bop her on the head. It really reminds me of the Castlevania fights from like Castlevania 1 and like 3 and stuff, where he's throwing those three fireballs at those three angles. And I think that's what it was inspired by. As a huge Castlevania fan, I really appreciate that. So I love Transylvania from DuckTales. Number three. 
At number three, I don't know if this is a cop-out or what, but the ghost houses from Super Mario World. There are so many of these things, and each one is different and really well designed. I'm not a big fan of puzzles, so there's definitely some bullcrap in here that I don't like. But overall, they, they keep you on your toes, you're always thinking, and you always gotta think kinda two steps ahead of the stage itself. Because there's constantly ghosts following you, or maybe there's a whole screen full of ghosts that you gotta look out, and they're changing from visible to invisible, and if they're invisible, sometimes you can pass through them. When they're visible, you gotta look out. The giant boos kinda make their debut here, where they're like following you, but if you look at them, they're a little bit too shy and covering their eyes. I've always loved that about boos. In fact, the boo is probably my favorite kinda like monster monster or whatever you want to call it from the Mario series. I'm not a Mario guy, but the boos are incredible. I just love how intimidating they are, but also how intimidated by you they are. They like to scare, but hate being scared themselves. I just love how like sinister looking, but also kind of like innocent and afraid these guys are. They really do make the ghost houses feel like a precursor to like the final castles in each area. It gives you kind of like that castle experience before the castle, which kind of puts your nerves to the test so that you're ready by the time you get to the castle. And that's kind of how I've always felt about them. But yeah, the ghost houses from Super Mario World land here at number three. Number two. Number two is from Mega Man 7. I'm a huge Mega Man fan, if you can't tell. Um, I love the Mega Man series. Proto Man is one of my favorite characters of all time. Mega Man 7 was a little bit different. It kind of flew under the radar being on the Super NES because we got the Mega Man X series on the Super NES. If you go from playing Mega Man 6, which is my favorite Mega Man game of all time, into Mega Man 7, there's noticeable differences. Your sprites are a lot bigger, the movement's a little bit different, stuff like that. So I feel like that's why Mega Man 7 has always kind of like flew under the radar a little bit. It's still an incredible game. I recommend checking it out. The Wily fight is a little tough. Shade Man Stage is an incredible Halloween themed level. It takes elements from Ghosts and Ghouls, which is kind of what inspired the outdoor segments, where you're walking around, the coffins are shooting up out of the ground, the zombies are coming out, you can blow their heads off and they'll still keep chasing you until you blow their bodies away. It's just so well done. And then you go inside, things get even spookier, it's got kind of like a castle laboratory theme to it. And then the mid boss is just top tier. There's two different ways you can defeat this guy. He's a giant jumping, bouncing kind of rocket propelled jack-o-lantern who opens up, shoots a bunch of shit at you, and if you shoot the outer jack-o-lantern, you take a different route through the rest of the stage than if you shoot the middle jack-o-lantern to kill that thing. So it's kind of nice because I always loved how in Mega Man 6 it started adding branching paths to the series, and then in Mega Man 7 it kind of does a throwback to that with Shade Man stage, and some of the other stage do it as well. The fact that the way you defeat the mini-boss and fight the mini-boss determines the rest of the stage for you is just so cool and unique, and I love it. And then of course there's Shade Man himself, a vampire robot, which makes no sense at all, but I love it anyways. He's super hard to fight without using the power armor adapter because he'll swoop down, grab you up, pull you into the sky, and start sucking your uh, blood or oil or whatever you would suck. It heals him as well. I think this is like the only Mega Man boss that I can think of that actually damages you while healing himself. So that's kind of cool, and it makes him a really tough boss fight if you're going in without the power adapter suit. I know he's weak against the spring. He's also really hard to hit with the spring at times, so I recommend getting the power adapter suit. Anyways, Shade Man and his stage are absolutely phenomenal, which is why they made it to number two on the list. Number one? <laughs> Dad, the zombies are on the way. Shouldn't we do something? Not now, Lisa. I'm trying to listen to the baseball game. Strolling in at number one is the final stage from The Simpsons Hit and Run. Simpsons Hit and Run is essentially like a Grand Theft Auto style Simpsons game where you drive around town, do a bunch of missions and stuff as the different characters. It's nice because like I mentioned earlier in the Halloween Town segment of the video, this is kind of the first time you get to freely walk around and explore Springfield and all the areas around it, which is really well done in this game. And this is probably one of, if not the best Simpsons game ever made as far as I'm concerned. But the final stage, makes everything a Treehouse of Horror episode. So the whole town of Springfield is inside a Treehouse of Horror episode. So you got zombies, you got aliens, you got everything, all right? Everything you love from the Treehouse of Horror episodes, which in my opinion are the best Simpsons episodes of all time, 
are right here in this hit and run game's final stage. It's nice because you explored the town for like the majority of the game, so you kind of got the gist of what Springfield looks like and how it's designed, where everything is, how everything functions, and then it's all kind of flipped upside on its head for this final stage with all this spooky shenanigans going on. I just love what they did with this and the fact that they even did this as the final level is so smart and so well done that I had to put it in here and honestly this wasn't going to be number one but the more I messed around in the final stage it just had to be in the top spot because the Simpsons always nail their Treehouse of Horror episodes and this is no exception from that. This is just so well done. It's the perfect rendition of Springfield in a Treehouse of Horror stage. At number one, Standing Strong is the final level from Simpsons Hit and Run. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to have a happy Halloween. Stay safe, have fun, get yourselves a lot of candy. If you got kids, make sure to steal a little. In JRPGs, we call it the hero tax. When you loot and raid, everyone's cupboards and pots. But on Halloween, it's the parent tax. So make sure to grab some of that candy. Your kids can't eat it all anyway, man. And be sure to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all if you enjoyed this video. Have a good one, guys. I will see you in the next one.